Good day, I'm Professor William Olivero, Professor of Science at Cumberland County College, and this is Science and You at Cumberland County College. Today, we're going to be talking about parasites, individuals that are not out to kill anyone, they may, but they're out to rob. And we could include mosquitoes, ticks, flatworms, even uh, when I was a kid, my father thought I was a parasite. But eventually I got a job. So it's a long list of individuals out there to rob you of blood, internal fluids. You can think of flatworms, like tapeworms, flukes, Chinese liver fluke, for example. There are blood flukes. Living in areas that are perhaps tropical compared to South Jersey. Matter of fact, thank God we're going to have winter, hate to say that, but that helps keep the mosquito population down. So there are many, many different type of individuals out there to live on you, live in you, and rob. And today we're going to talk about two Worms. We're going to be talking about two worms that are found in the world, one found in tropical areas and one found right here in South Jersey. These are round, unsegmented worms. We're not going to be talking about segmented worms like a leech, which may be out to bite you and rob you. We're not going to talk about its relative, an earthworm, which is quite beneficial. But we're going to be talking about two worms, one called the Ascaris lumbacoides, and the second one, a pinworm that you can find right here in the county. I have a plastic mount of the Ascaris worm that we show in general biology. It's extremely large, round, and segmented worm. And while some parasites, like some of the, fluke war the flukes, have both male and female sex organs, this roundworm has separate sexes. There are males and there are females. And if you look at the model here, you can see how we have the female at the bottom of the plastic mount and the male at the top. These individuals can grow to be 18 inches long, while here the female is around 10 inches and the male around 5 to 6 inches. Okay, we used to dissect them, looking at the internal uh, organs. We don't dissect them anymore, but at least we talk about them in class because they are quite common in certain parts of the world. These are parasites that would enter the body by way of an individual picking up an egg. An egg from a child playing in the dirt, playing with contaminated toys, uh, eating vegetation and has the eggs on the vegetation, getting the egg into the mouth. And all parasites, internal parasites, have certain type of pathways throughout the body. And this parasite has really a very, very complicated one. The eggs are swallowed. They pass into the stomach. They will hatch into a larva. And there are a number of larva stages in this individual. The larva makes its way down further into the digestive system and will leave the digestive system and go into either the circulatory system or the lymphatic system. If it goes into the circulatory system, it makes its way throughout the body and usually winds up into capillaries around the air sacs. They can go elsewhere, they can get lost elsewhere, but usually they break out of the circulatory system into the air sacs, make their way up through the respiratory system. Can you imagine that? Having these lava crawling up your bronchi, 
up your trachea and are swallowed this time, not as an egg, but as a little larva. It makes its way down, once again, into your digestive system. And after another month or so, I think it's the fourth uh, larva stage, it's now down into your intestine where it will mature. Once again, we're talking about a very, very large parasite that you really can't miss. They do damage the body. They can rob nutrients from your body. They can actually kill you. People have died when an individual would have many, many of these worms clogging up the digestive system. They are going to reproduce in your system. And again, because of poor sanitation, the eggs will be removed from human body, wind up in the environment, and because of poor conditions, someone's going to pick up the worm again in the egg stage, get the egg into your mouth, and you wind up with people in tropical areas with the ascaris worm that, again, could be dangerous. It will drain you of food from your body, it will cause pain, and in some cases, there may be enough of them to kill the individual. And this is a round, unseg unsegmented worm. Our second individual, and we do have a slide, and I think we're going to be able to focus in later on. This is Enterobius vermicularis. In fact, I like that name so much, I used to call my pussycat Enterobius vermicularis olivero. It sounds like a Roman legionnaire. Here comes Enterobius. But meanwhile, this is a pinworm. Enterobius vermicularis is a scientific name for a type of worm called a pinworm. It gets its name from one end of the animal that looks like a pin. And once again, you can get this parasite by picking up eggs. And what you can see sometimes is a child in school, unfortunately, scratching himself, scratching his rear end, perhaps, because the eggs are laid outside the anal area by the adult female. And, of course, again, poor sanitation in the home, in the child, and you'll find children in South Jersey with these pinworms. The life cycle, once again, is you're going to pick up the worm. You're going to pick up the egg. You can pick up the egg in little Johnny's house, perhaps, on the towels, in the eggs in the rug. And if you have one egg, you're going to have thousands of eggs that the, lay, the female lays. You might also pick up this parasite getting the eggs through the air. So if mom's making the bed, mom's shaking the rug or the towels, those eggs may be in the air and you can get them into your body. Matter of fact, if they get caught up into the nasal area, you may have this worm in the nasal area. And this fella here, again, is very small. When we have, uh, I would say, about a half an inch, that would be a good estimate quite small compared to our ascaris worm that, again, can be 18 inches long. Both are round, unsegmented worms. So here's an individual picking up the egg. Egg goes down into the digestive system. It will hatch into male and female pinworms. They're going to reproduce the female will leave the, anal, the anus. They will lay thousands of eggs. They will die there. And then once again, the child is scratching himself at night, which may irritate him. That's why little Johnny or Mary or whoever it happens to be is not sleeping well. The child is being irritated by these parasites. Picking up the eggs on the fingers, on the fingernails, going to school. Hello, Betty. Hello, Johnny. <laughs> Shaking hands. 
and the next victim picks up the egg, puts their fingers in their mouth, and can spread the parasite. Pretty common parasite in institutions where, again, hygiene may not be the way we like it to be. And people crowded together, perhaps, poor sanitation, this small pinworm can spread from person to person. Can spread in the home once again. And as, as a family, if they're being treated, and you could be treated for this worm, there's medication for this parasite. If you're being treated in the house, the whole family has to be treated. And the whole house has to be cleaned. And if you talk to your doctor or nurse, as I have, yes, they have seen people in this county with this parasite. So here we have two parasites, one in tropical areas, a very large one, which is very dangerous at times, and one in South Jersey and other parts of the country called the pinworm. Not necessarily the most dangerous parasite in the world. You want to compare it to the trichinella worm. You want to compare it to uh, hookworms, flukes, tapeworms, but talking about the worms is not particularly going to kill you, but certainly it's going to annoy you. Uh, it's going to cause irritation and has to be watched for, has to be eliminated, and therefore people have to have help. So here are two parasites. Uh, I guess we can spend more time on others, but these are the only two that we have time for. And I'd like to end by saying, once again, I'm Professor William Olivero. I've taught many different other science courses at the school, and maybe you recognize me. I've only been here for 50 years. But I still can walk, still have those beautiful blue eyes. Maybe the camera will come in on it. And this is Science and You, my way, at Cumberland County College. Have a good day.